Hey folks, it's Lucid, and uh, there has been a major patch for Dominion 6. Uh, there have been a lot of patches uh, that have come out since Dominion's was released, or Dominion 6 was released. Um, but yeah, this is a, a pretty big one. Uh, you can see it's a, about as long of a change log as we've had. Um, it focuses on, mostly on Asphodel. So I'll pull up the game and I'll actually show you some of the changes here. And I'm... I'm pretty excited about some of the Asphodel changes. It, I'm not quite sure where it landed. It was one of the nations that got reworked pretty significantly going from Dominions 5 to Dominion 6. But I, I don't feel like it like quite landed on its feet, you know, coming into Dominion 6. I think it was like sort of improved, but it was still kind of weird. I think it's still kind of weird, to be honest. But the changes they've done here are really cool. So this is going to be pretty fun to, to go through. There's new gods. The sprites have changed a bit. The some of the gods have changed that it used to exist, like Carry On Dragon, where they now have. There's this whole new concept with Asphodel, where they have these things called Carry On Vines or a Carry On Bow, and it will infect a target with a Dark Seed. And this is a debuff that when they die, they'll respawn as a mannequin, and not just any mannequin, a permanent mannequin. This is introducing something to Dominions that hasn't really been there before. It was something you could sort of do in like Conquest of Elysium, where there was like a bolt of unlife or something. And maybe it works that way in Dominions. You never see it happening. But there's some like unlife effects. But anyway, you get to keep the undead you make, which is cool as shit. I, they, honestly, if they did reforming, not reforming, reanimators that way, it might be pretty interesting. Like, maybe it would be a way to make the reanimator bless, which is a total meme right now. Maybe it would be a way to make it a little bit better. But, but yeah, and there's a good reason <laughs> that that effect is not, like, in the game very much. And that's because if you literally got more powerful for every army you fight, like, even if you're fighting as like a free spawn nation like Airmore or Scalaria, where you have infinite amounts of like troops, it feels like you still lose stuff every fight for the most part. There's very few fights where you actually get stronger, like numerically, absolutely from the fight. You know, you can do it with like Master and Slave and stuff, but that's like really cool and amazing when you pull it off. It's not like a normal kind of low low-hanging fruit, easy access sort of thing. And that is what this Dark Seed thing is. Is if you get infected with the Dark Seed, you are coming back to life as a little vine-covered fiend, a mannequin. So that's pretty cool. There's not a ton of things that have it. Most of the things that are in Asphodel don't have it. So it's not like you're not going to see Asphodel swarms just turning everything they touch into vine-covered critters. Only... Uh, a few of the pretenders have it. It might be... It might be that the carry-on lords have it and stuff. We can check that. Uh, I don't think so. I think it's basically a few of the pretenders, and it's the sacred, like, Sagittarian carcasses, which are like the sacred centaur-looking troops that you get. And their bows, things that they hit with their bows, are now potentially going to come back to life uh, as little mannequins. So that's super cool. Very flavorful. Grow Fortress has become a carry-on fortress. I don't think that changed much. We can look at it in-game. I don't recall it changing much. I was playing around with it earlier yesterday. You also now get uh, carry-on furies. And these we're going to look at, but they're big, hulking, minotaur-esque dudes that have a huge, like, skull battle axe, basically. It's a club, but it looks kind of like a battle axe that you bash people with. Has a fatigue on hit. They have a gore attack. They're sacred. Pretty cool. A few two, uh, a few types of mannequin chassis. Uh, one of my I, apparently this might have gotten fixed in a slightly earlier patch, but at some point between the beta and the current patch, they snuck in a stat fix where the the mannequin harpies got twenty map move. It was always like the most annoying thing was you would be moving your armies around and you have one of your free spawn types that has like, you know, 30% less map move. You always had to take them out of your armies. Anyway, that's been fixed. Some magic items are cheaper. I'm not actually sure what those all are. 
Sleep Vines, Vengeful Vines. We'll have to look at this. I, I haven't seen Vengeful Vines. I think this is available. While this is in the Asphodel section, I think most of these are available generically, these spells. You also get a new sacred, the Black Minotaur. We'll have to think if you would make it. I kind of think the Centaur is better in most cases. Though certainly there are going to be certain applications where the Black Minotaur will be better. Like, the Black Minotaur is going to be better at chopping up enemy gods or something like that. The Black Centaur gets a bonus Berserk. And then this guy. This was like a little bug they had in the, uh, with the, the mannequin spawning. It doesn't... Ma oh, magical items here. So this item is really weird. Carry on seed. We'll talk about it. But you can basically turn a commander into an upkeep-free, mindless mannequin. But it takes a really long time. Hopefully, there's some way they can kind of change it. It takes like 20 turns almost. Like, 20 turns might as well be forever. You know? It's like, it takes a long time. But And then the, a carry-on bow. I think this is a 5-gem item that lets you have basically that bow that, the, that your sacreds get that turn things into permanent undead mannequins. So, anyway, all very cool. Okay. Inc there's a bunch of things here. We'll go just go through some of the highlights. We're not going to cover everything here, but performance is better. Everybody always loves that. Now gets cheaper temples, which is pretty cool, given that one of the strategies with them, end is like spamming out temples and getting more sacred. So I like that a lot. The, the way people had been playing end in Dominions 5, kind of the meta way, not really the way I liked playing them, but I think what was generally agreed in the community to be the stronger way is you don't spam temples, you spam labs, and you go into like a heavy blood version of end. So I think that, and you don't really want to do both, like, because you can only recruit one kind of commander a turn. So temples being cheaper is going to help kind of shift end more towards maybe, it's going to make the temple version of end rather than the lab version uh, a bit more attractive. The heroism bless. This was pretty strong. It was a pretty cheap way to get stats. I think people, I think it was good. It was one of the best ways to get stats but i think people a little bit like overhyped it in, in terms of how good it was that said i have gotten my ass kicked by the ai with a heroism bless from our community memes mod okay next up we have awakened forest this thing was busted this is one of was one of the strongest spells i hadn't seen it in like a real game but i'd been playing around with it and oh my god this thing was strong now it only targets 50 percent of the battlefield so instead of getting mobbed by like 100 trees and getting mauled to death, you get mobbed by 50. It's still a really good spell. Yeah, some things no change their effect with regards to spirit form. Uh, Magic 4 is now giving horror marks. Mad terrain changes are... So there's some kind of weird things with terrain changes, and I don't fully understand this. We'll pull it up in, in Dominion 6 and see if we can sort of figure it out. But if you... Like, if you have a place that turns into a swamp, and swamps don't have a lot of resources, you're going to presumably get fewer resources. And it's also most likely going to cause people to migrate away. There are, like, if you click, we'll, we'll look at it in game, but if you click on the population number in, like, the little UI, it will pop up a, a pretty explanatory panel that's going to tell you what the ideal population is for each province. So as you change terrain type, that, that population, ide that ideal population will change. And presumably, if there's more people than the ideal population, they'll immigrate away from there and go into other places. I'm not, I don't really know how this mechanic fully works. We'll have to kind of figure that out. I, probably it will deserve another video at some point. We're not going to figure that out here today. There's just a ton of things. A lot of these are like uh, improvements in, in, uh, in terms of how fast the game processes. So this was like a weird bug where uh, Sermon of Courage would get cast on Morale 50 guys. I think... Yeah, I think that's mostly it. Uh, there, there have been a significant number of national summon changes. Um, I don't know all of them, but I know there have been quite a few. One of them, I, I know it was Lanka, uh, got a, a couple changes. I can't, I, I know there, there have been a few. I, I'm not going to be able to detect all of them. I'll show you the Lanka ones, though, in game. This is a, a kind of sad one, a little bit. Twice more no longer affects most monster shapes. This means that if you, one of the things, one of our favorite little ways to abuse Twiceborn 
was you transform into a big, like if you're a little goblin, you transform into a big monster. And then when you're twice born, you like come back, not as like a tiny little goblin white mage, but as a big monster white mage. And it was really cool. And now that doesn't work. <laughs> so rip. And you can't twice born your god anymore. Some of you might have missed that that note. Or you can't do twice form transformation bullshit on you. I don't think you can do either of them. You cannot. So far as I know, there's no way to change the form of your god. Not that I know of. Somebody will probably put some way in the comments I haven't thought of yet. There were also ways where you could like twice born. So I I like doing it with the Queen of Air Elementals. You could empower them in death and then twice born them and then kill them off and resummon them and basically start spamming out high air mages. It was super expensive. I don't think this is something that necessarily needed to get fixed because it was so expensive. Like some people like breaking the game, but you can understand if you're a game developer, you try to fix some of the things with people breaking your game. So I, I'm always conflicted about these. I think this is a fair thing because these are supposed to be, you know, like you get into thinking about mechanically how the game is supposed to work. You know, these are unique units. There's only three of them. You can't have more. It's not like if there's, there's only like three, you know, a certain number of the elemental royalty, like the people who rule the, these elemental realms. It's not like a printing press where you make these ancient beings that have been there since the dawn of time and you can just make like 10 of them. That's not how it's supposed to work. So I understand fixing it. I'm just saying I like, I mean, it's, it, it was expensive. It wasn't really abusive. It was cool. But is it thematic? Not, not really. But it's also not super thematic that if you kill a unique monster, they can come back when you just summon them again, which you can do anyway. Anyway. But, like, I don't want that to get fixed either. Because, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Then in late game, in late game Dominions, you wouldn't have any cool things left because all the unique things have all been killed off at some point in the game. Um, okay, stat, I'm going to pause it here. Okay, there's a, a few up here that are minorly impactful, like Dreams of Relay, not giving dimensional overload. This is a kind of cool assassination battle that will like send you into the void, basically. And in the void, all of your stats get divided by two if you don't have void sanity. So it's kind of cool, but apparently that wasn't working, so they fixed that. This one's actually pretty impactful. Pretenders no longer lose passive bless when outside Dominion. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what they mean by passive. I, I presume that that means non-incarnate. So that sort of makes sense if you think about it, right? Like the, the presence of the god in some way is what's going to give access to an incarnate bless. You don't have to be, they don't have to be in their dominion. So I don't know. I'm sure if you think about it too hard, it probably doesn't make sense, but it, it also sort of does. But the impact of that is if you have a god that has, uh, you know, any kind of bless. I'm trying to think. Most gods, I mean, you could have, like, Unbreakable or, I'm not sure. I mean, you can think of some. But uh, anyway, it's good to know that they'll be active. So, sometimes, I mean, you could, you know, have, like, a, a stat bonus god. You know, something that's giving you bonus attack or defense cool to think that those things will be active everywhere i wonder th there there also were weird interactions with like undying so like you could have a demi lich with undying and he would be three hp in your dominion but you teleport him on an enemy province an enemy dominion and because it had undying it would basically convert all the undying hit points into current hit points because it loses the undying bless because it's now in hostile dominion so it would be, be like a 20 hit point Demi Lich instead of a three hit point one. Anyway, kind of interesting. I don't think that'll be a thing anymore now, though. Okay, let me see what else. So this is interesting, and it might indicate some of Bill Winter's thinking about what they... I think they're kind of slowly feeling out what they want the different planes to be. I, I sort of... I hope it gets tied in some ways to globals too. Like 
maybe certain globals only work on certain planes. You know, like, I, I don't know how that would work. Would you have more global spots? I, I have no idea. And maybe that's a bad idea. But I, I think they're figuring out what they want the different planes to be. And one of the things that was cool in Conquest of Elysium was you could, like, you could go to a lot of these other planes. You could go to, you know, the Demon Realm or to the Void. So you can kind of go to them in Dominions, but it's not like you go to a map. You just go to, like, a place where imps attack you and stuff, but there's no, like, strategic map. And I think, I, I actually like that they're approaching it slowly. I think it's a really hard problem to, like, figure out how to make it fun in a game and not abusive. But the, here's some interesting flavor. So if you return from the Void, you can no longer be put inside a cave wall. So you're basically, if you fall out of the Void, you're not going to be falling out underground. But if you come back from Inferno or Kokotos, you'll usually, like, spawn in a cave. And I think the idea is those places are, like, beneath the ground. So that's kind of cool lore-wise that, you know, it's like the realm of, you know, there's always the heavens above and the, the devils below or, you know, the, the realms of hell below. So that's kind of a, an interesting, flavorful thing. Apparently, I, I didn't actually know this. I was curious. I had asked it, but I don't think anybody else exactly knew. I knew you could get, I think I posted something about it in the beta forums, but you could get both of these icons. Like, you could have fear and dread. I had no idea if they actually stacked or not. <laughs> so I think I was asking a question, but apparently they did stack, and now they don't, which makes sense. Yeah, I think that's mostly it for the, for the rest of the changes. You can, of course, come here to read the rest of the change log. But I think I covered most of the big ones. I probably missed something important, as I tend to do. But yeah, there's a bunch of things I'll sort of done in modding. You can see a bunch of a bunch of new commands. So these are, of course, going to be fun for the mod makers who can do all sorts of cool new things. But yeah, that's basically it. Let's go into the game now. And I'm going to show you first, just because I actually have it pulled up. I'm going to show you a couple of the cost changes. So some of you may not be aware, Lanka got a new summon back at, this is not new with this patch. This was new to Dominion 6, was they got the Daitya, if that's how you say it. But it had been costed, I think, at 75, and they reduced it to 45. And I think the thinking, my thinking on this is that, like, if you have, because the, these are, like, very high in research. You can't tell right now because we're in debug mod, but... But, oh, we, well, you sort of can. But the things that are high research, you should, they should probably be a little bit better. But I'm pretty sure the best way to play Lanka was just to make Rakshasa Warriors. <laughs> they were just so cost efficient. Now I think you actually have to think about it. Like, which ones are going to be better given who you're fighting? Um, these guys are pretty badass, the Daityas, but they're worse than the Danavas. So I'll, I'll just show them to you real quickly here. Okay, so yeah, these are the Denavas, and they are very, very strong. They've got three weapons. They do a ton of damage. These guys only have one weapon. Well, they have a Plague Bow, too. And the Plague Bow, to be fair, is about as high a damage weapon as you could have. I mean, these things will peg people to the ground. But, but still, it's a bow. Right, so by the time these things come online, if, you're mass if you have any significant quantity of them in your army, somebody will just put up Aerofend or something. And, you know, archery is less hard countered in Dominion 6, so it's possible there's like an archery play to do with these guys potentially. But, you know, really it's about this, the Unholy Sword, which is really good. It, can, it messes up Sacreds. However, these guys also have an Unholy Sword, but they also have an Unholy Spear. And they have an unholy axe. They're very killy, but they're ve they were very expensive. These guys have been changed from 75 per, 75 for three, and they're just units, right? So phenomenally expensive, 25 blood slaves per unit, but they're very good. But they were very niche. I never really saw anybody run them. And if people got them, they would maybe gift of reason them. But again, that's very expensive because you have to pay a boatload of gems to do that. So these were kind of niche, and these guys were significantly kind of worse, you know? Like, these guys are pretty much better. You could maybe come up with a scenario where these guys might do better. But anyway, I think they've been priced somewhat appropriately now. They're, these are 70, which I like. It's just a small cost nerf, or cost buff. 
And then these are 45. And I think that's pretty appropriate. Mandahas were also changed in Dominion 6. I'm going to, by the way, I, I still am going to make a video where I talk about all the summon changes, but these guys switched to being unique. So I think I summoned one of them here. So yeah, here's, here's one of the Mandahas. There's only three of them, and they come with the different paths. This is the Air 3, Death 3, Blood 2. Basically, one of these is going to be two, and it shifts which one it is. I think that's what it is. Though maybe it is... Well, we can just summon them real quickly. Um, Wait, do I not have it? Oh, there it is. Yeah, here they all are. So, yeah, I was right. So it just shifts which one's the, the two path, but still a, a super sick unit. The, there have been a couple other changes with this, the cost the cost for these. I know these are a tiny bit cheaper as well. I think there were 30 before, but yeah, not, not huge changes, just a tiny change there. Yeah, so that's cool. Now we're going to go pull up Asphodel. Okay, so this is the Asphodel. They... They've got some cool stuff. So first we'll talk about the black Minotaur that they get. It's so basically this was the Asphodel Sacred. Asphodel has had has a problem, which was to get a lot of these. So with if you play Pangea, one of the nice things about this unit, the White Centaur, is they're low resource and they're reasonably high quality. And you can take high dominion score and you can just pour out a ton of them. You can just make so many of them because they don't take many resources. They take a decent amount of recruitment points, but not so much that it would really limit you. Um, you can make 10 of these a turn as Pangea. Like you can have a build where you make 10 white centaur a turn. The problem with Asphodel is if you have high dominion, you're not going to have population for very long, which means you're not going to be making black centaur for very long. So that, as we talk about the sacreds and the nation, that's kind of a problem with them. So, and that hasn't been fixed, really. There's a small amount of population that is preserved. The fort will protect a thousand population. So you'll never go beneath a thousand from normal pop kill. Things like spells and stuff can take it below a thousand. But yeah, that's a, uh, that's not much. <laughs> okay. You're, you're not making many black centaur a turn from, from this. Um, so yeah, a anyway, these guys are very versatile. They, you know, they go berserk. They have decent base natural protection. They've got two attacks and a javelin. They're just a pretty solid unit, especially they're not like the best sacred in the world, but you can make a ton of them or, you know, like the Pangea version and then kind of just run over people by a, a mixture of quality and quantity. The, if you look, they don't hit terribly hard right here, though, right? Like, they're going to get the Berserk value of four. This got increased by one. I think it used to be three, and now it's four in this patch, the Berserk value. So they're going to hit even harder now. So, yeah, they hit hard, but not that hard. Like, if you have to kill, like, a Titan or, a, you know, a Pretender or some really beefy dude, you know, they might not kill him. These guys hit for 30. They have a big battle axe. So anyway, they hit very, very hard and have Berserk 5. And the way Berserk works is once it triggers, it's going to add to strength. And that is going to get multiplied by 1.25 when it gets added to this. So it's actually going to be like 36 or 37 damage when they go Berserk. They hit very hard. That's a lot harder for these. So I think in general, the Black Centaur is still better. But it's cool that you have the option to get the Black Minotaur, and they're definitely going to be a bit better for chopping down elites. Um, so, yeah, that's the Black Minotaur. There's a few other cool things that, that you get. One thing, I don't... Let me see if we can make it here. Well, we'll do the items in a second. One thing is you get these horses, which are, are new. So you get these carry-on horses, which have new sprites, are very cool looking. The Sagittarian Carcasses which uh, I had mentioned earlier, they get a carry-on bow now, and this will do carry-on seed, and this is how you get the permanent unit. So that's pretty cool. Uh, here are some of the carry-on furies. Let me pull them down here. These are the new sacred. So 
you get these, from what I noticed, you seem to get them at about half of the rate that you would get the, these bow guys. Maybe a bit less. You don't, you're not going to get piles of them. They'll be pretty special when you get them. But they're very killy. They've got a magic weapon. So none of your other sacreds have really magic weapons. I mean, like, these guys have a vine whip, but this is capped at one point of damage. They have a carry-on bow, but it's a bow. It's not going to really be killing stuff. So if you really need to kill things with a magic weapon and you didn't take any part of your bless, well, the Skull Club is pretty magical and pretty killy. So it will do that job for you pretty well. They also have Berserk, which is pretty sick, and they've got pretty high base natural protection. So they're going to be pretty tough to kill. You know, they're going to jump up to, what, 14 protection? Yeah, they're going to be pretty good. So, yeah, that's a super cool addition. I don't think most of, you know, the, the Harpies can move a lot faster. There might have been some other smaller changes to some of these units. I haven't really noticed any. We'll pull up the new spells real quick, too. Okay, so here they are. So these actually, I think, I think Tangle Thicket was new, too. Maybe that was the other one. This one's generic. I think two of them are maybe national and one of them's generic. So one is Tangle Sleep Vines. And this is an area of effect one. And it's going to cause vine fatigue and entanglement. So you're basically going to get entangled. But while you're getting entangled, you're also getting put to sleep, basically. So kind of cool. Kind of like a, one of the worst things that could happen to you if you were like an elf. So, I don't know. It's interesting. It's a, it seems like a pretty good counter thug spell. And then Vengeful Vines is pretty interesting. This is going to poison you, but it's also going to give you Carry On Seed. It's area of effect 1, range 20. So basically, you can get people poisoned and infected with the Carry On Seed, and then they're going to pop up as a permanent, as a permanent mannequin. So that seems pretty cool. And, and these are things your kind of bad dryads can cast. It's, that's nice, too. It gives them something to do. Yeah, I just checked. And Tangled Thicket, indeed, is the, the new spell that was added. And this does... It's an area of effect in Tangle, I believe. Yeah. Everybody has access to this one. I'm not sure if that was intended or not. Uh, I assume it was. But, yeah, it's just a big area of effect in Tangle. So that's pretty cool. Uh... uh. Okay, let me make these items for you real quick. Okay, so this is the carry-on bow. And it's three nature, two death. And it's going to entangle and then also afflict you with the carry-on seed. I can't really think of how this would be good, like, being spammed out. But it's kind of cool. I mean, it's a cool idea. I just think, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe, I mean, maybe if you had hammers and you're making it for two nature, one death, and you have them on scouts, I still don't think it's worth it. <laughs> but, you know, it is an idea. If you have a weapon bless, which, you know, Asphodel certainly could take, it, that would also transfer to the bow, which is kind of cool. <laughs> the other item is this. The carry-on seed. And I'll actually make one of these and we'll put it on somebody. But basically, you stick it on and then you wait for them to die. We'll see how long it takes. I'm going to put it on one of these guys, a mounted commander. Because it should also bring back the horse, which is kind of interesting. Okay, it's turn four. And we put this on and we'll see how long it takes. I'll pause it. Okay, it's 20 turns later. Uh, it's actually turn 24, and this guy is finally down to one hit point. I think this is going slower than they intended. It's supposed to do 10% of your health a turn. But something, I don't know exactly how that's working. Something isn't quite right. But but yeah, I mean, it's not. I don't think this is practical to use in a game if it's this. If you could convert somebody and just pay 10 gems, yeah, it could be worth it. But it's it's kind of too slow right now. There might be ways to accelerate it. Like you could maybe plan ahead and get people diseased. Like there's several items that can disease you. Like you have a Bane Venom charm you shuffle around. Get people almost dead. And then you make the item just in time to send them off. So I don't know. I'll show you what they look like real quick. I'm going to have to hit it probably a few times for them to actually convert. 
Yeah, see, he still hasn't converted. That last hit point takes a while. Okay, he converted. So, I thought they got a horse. Maybe I, can I resummon mount? No. I thought you got a horse. Maybe you don't. Anyhow, the cool thing about this chassis is they are mindless. So, yeah, this is one of the very few ways left in the game to get mindless commanders. Not something you can do in many, many ways. You know, like golems are mindless. And it's, it's a very short list now. Because it used to be you would do life after death. So now Asphodel has another kind of unique thing, which is they're one of the few nations that can actually make mindless commanders. So that's pretty interesting, and they can do it to anyone. Furthermore, they could give this item to another player, and that player could make them. So that puts them in a position to also sell these. The problem with selling them is it's going to take forever for it to work. Like, forever. <laughs> So you have to kind of decide how that's going to happen. You know, like, I don't, I just don't see people buying things and paying a lot of money and Asphodel making money for something that in 20 turns will turn them into a mannequin. But it's a very cool idea, right? And I, I like the idea, especially if you imagine you get like add-ups of the Golden Order, or you know, like some indie throne mage or something, and you're converting them into little Asphodelites. I don't know. It just seems, I, I love the idea of this. It just needs to be sped up a lot. Like it should take like five turns. Ten turns is forever. Like ten turns is so long in a game. And it, like ten turns if you were going to do some like giga spell or like some kind of big economy thing it would be fine. But you're paying this amount to get all these afflictions, right? We got literally every affliction while we waited 20 turns. To, to get this. Maybe I don't understand how to use it right. That was my understanding from reading this. Um, anyhow, it's a cool idea. Uh, I could probably use a, a tiny bit more refinement, but I think in general, the, the nation, I, I'm really looking forward to play the, playing them. There's a bunch of things that makes Asphodel better now. Like things can turn into forests everywhere. You get better free spawn in forests. I don't think the population protection existed at all in Dominions 5. So even though it's not very much, it's better than nothing. The free spawn is a bit better. Oh, the other thing that got changed about the free spawn, I don't know if it was this patch or a little bit before, is that they got cold resistance. That was not always in there. And that was kind of a problem because you always wanted to take cold as Asphodel because flame, like fire elementals, just completely ruin you. Like they, it's hard for me to describe to you if you have not seen it yourself what fire elementals do to hordes and hordes of mannequins. They will just kill indiscriminately large amounts. Do I have, can I show you that? I feel like I need to show you. Oh yes, we can. Let me just let me show you this. Okay, this is this is what fire elementals do to these. This is why having and fire elementals have a malice. They they've been nerfed basically in Dominion Six. So we're making a fair number of them. You don't really need to make this many. Honestly, one with fought with... Oh, you can't do it because they're spirit form. You used to be able to put iron warriors on them, but maybe there's some way to other, you know, give them some other kind of buff. But just watch what happens here. I mean, I could have done it... I, I probably could have done it with certainly one casting, maybe even fewer, because these are not the full size ones, right? These are just the ones you get from Living Fire. But yeah, they're weak. They have a pretty big cold malice, and they, you know, susceptible to cold, and they have firepower, so they're going to get lower stats here. I don't think that's going to change Fire Shield, which is what's really doing the work, but still, anything helps, because this truly is the bane of Asphodel. Here, somebody got to the back and killed the debug sensei, but but yeah, anyway. So, lots of cool changes to Asphodel, a lot of cool changes to the game. There've been it's I there've been a ton of changes from Dominions 5 to Dominion 6 to all of the summons, and Illwin are still going through, especially some of the national summons, they're still going through tweaking things here and there. So, I think that's really cool because I, I, I do think having summons priced a bit better is going to go like a really long way to making battles really interesting when you start seeing like way more types of units in it. So 
pretty excited about all that. And uh, anyway, thank you all for, for joining me. And I hope you're enjoying playing Dominion 6. Cheers.